Hey everyone, it's Voss. You're watching the Voss Coin YouTube channel. I'm back here with Crazy Dane for round two at your solar mining farm. Hey guys, Crazy Dane here. Glad to be back on the Voss <laughs> channel. So basically, um, what we got, if you come over here, we can see where the power comes in and up in here. So this is basically uh, a 400 amp service that feeds uh, both the main residence as well as the shop building with the solar and the um, and the miners. Okay. And then you can see in here is basically where, you know, the power comes into the, the meter base and then it splits off here. You know, this goes into the house and this end goes down into the shop building with all the solar. What about the poop emoji? <laughs> the what? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, and then I have here, you can see there's some current transformers so I can measure how much power the house uses versus um, the shop. So is that how you get all the data on your computer? Is that where all that data is pulled from? Like the spreadsheet you showed me? Uh, well, actually I have a second unit uh, from called the Sense power unit that's down at the shop so mm -hmm. I'll show you that when we get down there that's the one that actually collects the, the specific solar energy okay this one is specific for the the power that the house is using and you you did all this yourself right like correct then you even did this panel install and everything yes yeah I had to have it inspected but uh, yeah the power company and the county inspector were really cool about letting me do it myself as long as they came out to inspect it at every phase of the of the project that's awesome yeah there's nothing cheap about panel work. No, <laughs> no, definitely saved a lot of money by doing that myself. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to take a brief moment to thank today's video sponsor, the Crypto.com app, which is available for Android and Apple iOS. Without them, this video tour would not have been possible. They have an awesome app that let you easily buy, sell, trade, and stake cryptocurrency to earn passive income there, all from your phone. And you can buy in with US dollars. You can link your bank account and do a normal uh, ACH transfer, or you can buy cryptocurrency with a debit or credit card if your bank allows that. They also have a $50 sign up bonus if you can complete the terms. You get 50 bucks for free. Pretty cool stuff. Links out in the video description below. So then if you walk down the hill here, we can see the, um, the various solar arrays. I, I see the expansion took place. Yeah, yeah. So what, what wattage are your panels now? So they're still, the first ones I installed back in, uh, oh, what was it, 2015, I think it was. They were 260 watt panels. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the latest ones I've done are 290 watt panels. Okay. Um, I've pretty much, you know, again, I've done all this work myself and it's roughly about a um, fifty a watt, you know, by doing all the work myself. Plus there was a federal um rebate of 30 percent yeah you know which unfortunately this is the last year of that yeah our last year was uh, 2019 was but uh, it worked out you know pretty well and uh i would say i um, got maybe one more year to go before it's uh, 100 percent um roi that's that's awesome so you made, like so you built this out in 2016 and you're gonna break even within the next year probably Probably, with yeah. An, with an expansion too, right? Yeah, yeah. That, well, the expansion still got a little ways to go, I think, to pay itself off, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, but the other it's definitely getting there. And so you had, you had three units when I was here before, right? Or was it two? It was, I had these two, mm -hmm. you see here on the hillside, and then the one in the, in the front there. And that's the new this unit. This one here is new. Okay. Um, and unlike these, <laughs> all the existing ones I did, they all use micro inverters, you know, meaning that, um, in each solar panel has its own DC to AC converter. Um, and then, you know, that's mostly, in hindsight, I would have probably done it um, using uh, string inverters instead. How come? Uh, they're cheaper and I've had some issues with these failing. Now, yeah. They do have a 10 year warranty, but it's still- Still a hassle. Still a hassle <laughs> to have to replace them. Yeah. But, you know, I think I've gotten, for the most part, rid of all the ones that had issues. So these have been, you know, pretty. knock on wood, they've been they've been <laughs> running pretty good for a year plus now without any of them failing. Yeah. So how long did it take you labor wise to put up one of these arrays? Uh, I got a friend of mine that I use and uh, we were able to pretty much um, pour the concrete and set the, the steel, do the steel framing on one weekend and then install all the rails and the panels the following weekend. So not not too bad, two weekends worth for two guys Yeah. to do uh, two units like this and you're, you're definitely obviously talented 
with this kind of stuff, but that still seems like pretty good. That's like, that seems great timing for building out this kind of infrastructure. It's yeah, working hard. No, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, and I, I kind of try to keep all of this, um, you know, in this area close to where the power was. So I didn't have a lot of loss from, uh, um, like, you know, voltage drop. Mm -hmm. so, and so like to, to visualize this panel, like how many miners does this run? Um, well, so sort of all together, I got about, like I said, 50,000 watts of capacity, which might sound like a lot, but um, if you have, like I do, I have about 10 mining rigs that run 24 seven. So they consume about um, 9,000 watts, you know, all, all the time. So that works out to, um, whatever that works out to 9,000 times 24, you mm -hmm. know, and that's about how much, um, whatever that kilowatt hour is in a 24 hour period is about the same as what these panels produce on average. You know, of course, today is a nice sunny day, so they generate quite a bit. I'd say today that between all these panels, they're gonna generate about 330, 350 kilowatt hours. Yeah. You know, which is way more. The miners, they consume maybe 200 kilowatt hours in a 24 hour period, but yeah. you have rainy days, and of course you have <laughs> the Sad, night. cloudy days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, the new, one of the new arrays. Mm -hmm. that is using a DC inverter. So you can see that each panel, there is no microinverter. It's just these uh, DC voltage strings that are tied together. Yeah. And then they come together here in this oh. box. Um, sort of improvised, you know, this is on the cover. I use some little rubber grommets to keep uh, it sealed, to keep water out of it. Mm -hmm. And then, so basically there are three strings total here. Um, you know, these are all connected in a series about uh, 12 panels per string. Yeah. So that gets up to about 400, 450 volts DC per string. And that is then fed over into uh, this Sunny Boy, like, <laughs> like the name, you <laughs> That's know, funny. SMA Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy. And you can see here, it shows you what the current wattage is. It looks like it's putting out about 5,500 watts right now. And you can see on the lower, lower number represents how many kilowatt hours it has produced since it was installed. That's fine. Yeah. So it's like your little leaderboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then here I can show you, this is a sub panel that, um, that basically combines all the, all the, uh, AC power from all the panels. And then it combines it into a single feed that then goes over into, um, into the meter base here. Uh, so if we look at that, we can kind of see, we can see that. So, and this is, this is, uh, this is these big 500 MCM aluminum cables. That's what runs up to the, to the main residence in that, um, uh, that splitter we saw before that fuse box. Yeah. And, uh, so that, you know, being that these are 500 MCM that keeps the voltage drop very low, mm -hmm. I would say I have maybe at one and a half to two volt voltage drop, you know, and it, so it runs about 250 volts. You know, I know 240 volt is sort of the, you know, the standard, but yeah. the power company likes to run it a little hotter to begin with. And then I get up to maybe, um, I've seen as high as 160 volts here because all these panels, when they run, they tend to lift up the voltage across uh, yeah. everything I have connected past the transformer on the pole. Well, that's probably nice because that probably gives you a little bit better efficiency. Right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, exactly. The higher voltage, you know, the Ohm's law, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, voltage squared yeah. divided by resistance is, I'd, yeah. I'd rather be uh, at 250 than, th than 230. Yeah, yeah. And then these are the, uh, these are the current transformer for that sense unit that mm -hmm. um, I showed you up at the house. Is, is that, that the tracks? I'm sorry, go ahead. That, yeah, and that, so that's what tracks the, um, you know, the solar power generated as well as the consumption of the mining rigs. Yeah. yeah that's very cool. I remember the pictures from when you trenched out the, you trenched out for these wires. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was a serious all, trench. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks good now. You get a little grass seed, you never knew. <laughs> yeah. And then here, these are the, this is the ventilation for the miners. Mm -hmm. You know, I basically build this out with these uh, washable filters, you know, so about once a month I take them out and just backwash them with cold water. Yeah. Air dry them and then put them back in. Um, do you have an, do you have another set that you put in there when you're washing them or you just like run no, it open? No, I just leave it open, wash them, start in the morning and then in, by afternoon I can, um, you know, put the dried ones in there and, and it's all good. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. if you remember my mining set, I ran that 
basically unfiltered for months before. I mean, it, it got gross in there, but like, it didn't break anything, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does not, get- Not recommended, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it does get, it does get pretty, pretty messy. I mean, I got lazy. I've done them once this year. You know, I probably should have done it uh, more than once, but- um, You're on the, uh, you're on the bear market cleaning schedule. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I get it. So, all right, so moving along. So we have those two. So those are 24 panel um, arrays, each of those. So um, each of those have uh, uh, two 40 amp fuses that they connect to in that sub panel we showed. And then these, of course, are the DC string uh, array. So if you don't mind me asking, and you don't have to tell if you're not comfortable, but like, What's like your cost into this? Like, like if so, I'm, I'm like, I want this, how much does that so cost? So I got a good, I'd say these panels were, um, well, I can tell you the string inverter over there on the wall, which is uh, rated at 7.7 uh, kilowatts. That was uh, $1,400. Mm -hmm. And then each of these panels were, uh, I want to say I paid uh, like 120 for them, which is a really good deal. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the, the three inch metal tubing was probably about seven, eight hundred dollars to build that. And then the, um, all the, the aluminum rails, they're all from uh, Iron Ridge is the brand. I like them. They're pretty, pretty good, um, flexible. And that was probably another grand. So, you know, all said and done, you know, this is, um, four times, I think this is 36 panels here. Mm -hmm. So I would say all in all, it was maybe, um, uh, like eight, eight, ten thousand. Less than that, uh, but yeah, about seven, seven, eight thousand. I would say. Yeah. All in, then of course my labor that I don't charge <laughs> for. But um, and then and then don't forget that you know off that you know I got thirty percent back as a federal tax credit. Mm -hmm. So you know, I made about six thousand dollars when it was all said and done. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, taking yeah. advantage of stuff like that is just like yeah, super benefit. I mean, you, you literally just cut your break even time down, like instantly. Yeah. So that's awesome. And, and this, and this is their Ray that's running on the sunny boy. So this is like on this nice sunny, <laughs> sunny boy. Yeah. That's a good, I like that branding. <laughs> yeah. It gets up, you know, these are actually, these panels are actually, um, will produce as much as 9,000 Watts and that's only rated at 7.7. .7. So what will happen is that it'll, it'll flatline when mm. it gets to the 7.7 .7 and you stay there and then start going down. Yeah. You know? So, um, so that is a little bit of inefficiency, but a lot of times, unless it's a really pure blue sky like this, you're not going to hit that and it gives you more uh, capacity in the AM and PM you yeah. know, because it extends uh, the, the time that it can produce. You know, the more of those you have in, in a series, you know, the more voltage you have and, and it'll, they'll start producing at a earlier time than having just have it sized exactly for the, uh, the inverter. Have you noticed any kind of, kind of like ma manufacturing to fit like basically like discrepancies between the panels like say this one like you know it hits 300 watts and this one's a little bit lower and it's like producing like um, 260 no and even they're right next to each other they've this. been very very consistent you know for these that are string uh string inverters where they're all connected in series or mm -hmm. well about uh, 10 of them 10 or 12 are connected in series you know those you do want to have matching panels mm -hmm. if you use micro inverters like i do with you know my uh, earlier panels it doesn't really matter what the, um, you know, if there are differences because pretty much once they get converted from DC to AC, you know, they just all connect um, in parallel on an AC bus, basically back to a breaker panel. So it doesn't really matter if some panels produce more versus less. Another advantage of having microinverters is shading. You know, if you have a tree or some structure that's, that partially shades some of the panels in, in part of the day, with microinverters, that doesn't impact any other panels. But when you have uh, panels that are wired in series, uh, mm. DC back to a string inverter, you know, if you have one panel that gets a lot of shade, it's going to take the rest of the panels in that string with it. Yeah. You know, so That's so you like don't. That. So in my case, I really didn't really need to go um, microinverters because for the most part, you know, everything is there's no shade here any time of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, one exception being, you know, in the winter time. These here do get a little shade in the morning because of that shop building there. Yeah. Um, so one neat thing I did over here is I wanted some more, I wanted like a pole barn or a shed to store all my uh, tractor implements. 
So why not some more solar so why, panels? So why not make the, the roof out of solar panels? <laughs> so that's what I ended up doing here. That's so cool. You live in the green life. But yeah, this I used um, little filler strips between the panels and then silicone caulk mm -hmm. to seal it so that it's, it's um, Just like a roof. you know, watertight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And left about a quarter inch gap between them for expansion, you know, for when it heats. But, uh, but yeah, this panel has been, uh, uh, has been great, you know, and unlike all the other ones, this one, they're all mounted vertically instead of horizontally, mm -hmm. you know, which has given me, um, it just worked out better. You know, what I end up doing is using these uh, metal struts instead of the iron ridge aluminum. So these are anodized, gold anodized uh, struts, you know, that are typically used for um, electrical work to hold up sub panels and things. So they're, mm -hmm. you know, I can just pick those up at a big box store for pretty cheap, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I just found the right size screws and stuff to, to mount the panels. It was, it's a lot more time consuming doing this and then the all metal, you know, I mean, building this structure took like, you know, I'd say probably five to 10 times more labor than it was just putting those up, you know, but yeah. that's sort of, you know, this is a lot less expensive. Plus I get the utility of being able to store uh, stuff inside of it. Yeah. No, it's, that's super cool. Honestly, I, I had, I wouldn't have really even thought to do something like this, and that, that's that's great. See, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, so how would you? What, what about like roof mounting? Because you have the panels up there that are roof mounted. Like, does that is that like a total total pain to do and all? Well, like the thing I'll now? tell you, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it definitely, you know, those are also micro inverters, mm -hmm. and um, the way that that system works, um, you know, I've had micro inverters fail in the middle of the panels, and yeah. to get to those, you have to remove, you know, four or five panels from the top or the bottom yeah. to get to those to lift them up to get to the inverter to replace it. So, in hindsight, I would never, and I wouldn't recommend anyone do a roof mount system with micro inverters because maintenance after the fact is a huge pain you know if i had had a solar company install this and it would be on them to do that mm -hmm. that would be one thing but if you were uh, <laughs> you do it do. yourself yeah, it, it's a, a huge it's a huge pain to replace those um, thumbs micro down. inverters yeah it's a thumbs down from crazy day <laughs> <laughs> now that makes sense though because like my first impression is like roof mounted that makes sense you know you get the roof right there but then I don't know, we start digging in a little bit more and start thinking about things, especially from like the maintenance point of view. It's like, I mean, you're saying like yeah. going up there, it's already a drag to do anything like that, let alone you got to right. remove three panels to get to the one you want to. Yeah. And I mean, one, one thing that was good with this is the orientation was right. You know, it's southern facing pretty much perfectly mm -hmm. to begin with. So from that perspective, it did make sense to do a roof mount because of course the mounting is a lot less expensive when you have the infrastructure already there. You just need some some brackets. Some brackets pretty much to, to mount the roof, uh, to roof, to mount the panels. The rigs look cool all together. Last time they were all yeah, over the house. Yeah, they're all scattered in the house. So right. I don't know if it's going to be too loud in here, uh, but hopefully not. But no, um, it's okay. But basically, yeah, so these are, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rigs here. Um, it's surprisingly cool in here. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Good thing is that the, you know, they were, it pulls in the air from over there. That's the northern side where the sun is, and so it's kind of shady, and you got yeah. that hillside right there, so it keeps it a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. But yeah, generally speaking, it, it, you know, it's really not any warmer in here than it is outside. In fact, most of the time, it's really cooler in here, even with these miners. And you'll see that in addition to that fan I have back there that's basically sucking in the air and blowing it across the mining rigs, mm -hmm. there's an exhaust fan um up in the up near the top there yeah i see you're still uh still working on the car yeah that <laughs> was it was it there last time or was it over there <laughs> it was over there yeah, yeah yeah it hasn't really not much not it's much come up with this little side project yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny and then that's if awesome. we um let me show you over here So I do have sometimes when um, when it's really really hot outside, mm -hmm. uh, both of these fans are three phase fans, so I can adjust the speed of them just by changing the frequency that that uh, they run at. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see over here, um, I have this little um, converter. It basically takes two 40 volts um, single phase and converts it to three phase. So I can change the speed of the fans. Right now I'm at 40 hertz, you know, which is fine for now anyways, but some hot afternoons I might crank it up to like 50 or 60 hertz. So to do that, it's very easy. You just go here and um, switch to where you want and then you just hit enter and then it'll ramp up to the highest speed. Yeah, I heard them like just instantly ramp yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much wide open now. Yeah. Um, and here's that, um, here's that sense device that um, has those current transformers, mm -hmm. you know. So it's pretty, it's a very neat device. You basically just hook it up. Um, if you don't have solar, you just have one set of current clamps that hook up to your mains. And then if you have solar, you have a second set of current clamps that hook up to your solar feed. And then it just has the Wi-Fi and uh, it connects out to the cloud where it collects all the data and then you can have an app on your phone or you know connect to it on, in, a, in a web browser and pretty much yeah. it gather all your stats and I'll, I'll show you some of that later up at the house you know how it tracks it um, weekly monthly and yearly and how much you produce how much you consume you can put in your uh, cost per kilowatt hour and it can kind of tell you you know how you're doing yeah so it's a, it's a neat device that's gotta be awesome just for tracking your data and uh, making sure it's worth it. I know it is, but you, yeah. you also want to know how much is it worth yeah, it. Yeah, no, and it's and I also got, you know, I got another, you know, I have another device here that also does it. This one has current transformers for each individual circuit. So I can, I could track it down to each individual mining rig if I wanted to. You know, yeah. what I'm doing is, um, if you look over here, you can see, you know, I have a, a number of 30 amp breakers that feeds uh, power banks that then in turn feeds each shelf for miners. Yeah. Um, and I track the power consumption uh, for each of those rails that feed uh, a shelf of miners. That's awesome. Just nice, effective, simple. So I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but what are you mining with all these rigs? Uh, I've been on, on Seacoin for um, since late last year mm -hmm. and it's been uh, pretty uh, pretty solid you know the rigs are very stable um uh, once in a while I'll try a few other things but i keep coming back to this you know as uh it's just been really good to me for for the last probably close to a year now and so are you are you mining and converting into like bitcoin or are you holding them um i mine and i convert to bitcoin and then i tend to hold the bitcoin yeah, yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with that yeah Sorry, Zeno. I mean, so, sometimes <laughs> I go up to, you know, I mean, I get, um, right now I'm mining about 200 a, a month, yeah. give or take, you know, and I'll, you know, there have been a few times, not too long ago, where it actually bumped up to like from a little over $4 to close to 8 or $9, I think, you know, yeah. so I, I caught that just about right, I think, and, and converted to Bitcoin, and then. That's awesome, you, especially yeah. if you have a stash. Yeah. <laughs> so. So yeah, no, it's been, it's been, um, it's been fun, you know, I don't know what, um, and then also, also, by the way, the way that this building is connected to the, the main building, I had to have fiber when I dug up and ran the power cables up to the house, I went ahead and, and threw some fiber in the trench as well. So I actually have a 10 gig connection between here and the house. I know it's overkill, but you know, hey, why not? I figure why not? It's just, you know, 15 bucks for some transceivers, you know, so why not one 10 yeah. gig across it? So Absolutely. And so as, as far as the rigs, um, what are like the main cards are running over there? Uh, it's mostly 1080 Ti's that I've been running since uh, 2017. Yeah. I think I have about, uh, I think about 25 1080 Ti's and then the rest of them are basically a mix of uh, 1070's and 1070 Ti's. Okay. I, I did have a bunch of um, 1060's 3 gig cards, but I. I got rid of those because, you know, as you know, three gig isn't really enough to uh, to hold a lot of algos anymore. Yeah, you know? it used to be totally fine, but yeah. now it's like yeah. uh, there's uh, there's just not that many coins you can mine. Right, and it kills that utility and, and also resale some. Yeah, most desirable. You had, you had mentioned something about doing a little mini solar like standalone. I thought maybe. Well, honestly, you really inspired me with that thing. I have to like pay <laughs> you. Uh, royalty fees or something but like i would basically like i would love to have just something like this where it's not too cr like not too crazy crazy dane <laughs> but um you know something where i can run like a handful of miners mm -hmm. and i was thinking about maybe just doing to 
Actually, I meant to ask you about that. What, what, what's your battery set up? So there are no batteries. Basically, the way it works, I have net metering with mm -hmm. a power company. So anytime that I produce more than I use, uh, it goes back into the grid and mm -hmm. I get credit for it. Yeah. Um, and I get full credit. You know, basically that they give me a bank of kilowatt, hour, kilowatt hours that I build up on my account. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whenever I need more, like at nighttime or when wintertime or whatever, then I just uh, pull back from that, that bank of credit hours. That's like so incredibly perfect for what you do because the way, the way I was looking at it, like if I couldn't get into like a great deal like that is, you know, I would just run it during the day and when the power is exhausted, just have them shut off and just kind of almost have them. Because w the research I did is just, the, you know, adding batteries and, and everything like that, it just really makes it a lot more expensive. Yeah, and there's maintenance, you know, because batteries don't last forever, you know, I'd say mm. five, six, seven years typically. Um, yeah. Now, there are some places, you know, they don't do it around here, but where um, your cost per kilowatt hour is based on time of day or time of year, you know, here, I think most of Virginia, it's all flat rate, you know, whatever, 12 cents a kilowatt hour on average. Mm. But I know on the West Coast, there's a lot of places where, you know, late afternoon is peak usage and they charge you more. Yeah. So in a setup like that, you know, there could be some benefits to having a, a battery bank. Yeah. Um, one thing I do have, I'll show you here, I do have these two little um, panels that are just out here by themselves connected to this little um, charger here. and. I basically had this set up down uh, down in the field by the river with a, a wireless link. So I had some cameras down there to see what was going on at night down by the river. <laughs> so this is pretty neat, you know. So I have two uh, two panels wired in series into this. It's called a Solar Point from um, Ubiquity. They are mostly known for uh, making network gear, mm -hmm. but they also um, they also make uh, solar gear. In fact, my initial setup here was all SunMax as well, you know, by Ubiquity. I remember but, that now. I remember you talking about that before. But but basically, what this is, it's pretty neat. You know, so basically, you can have one or two panels uh, hooked up to. Uh, you need 24 volts. Um, so basically, I just two two car batteries in pair in series to get that. And then what this does is this manages charging the batteries. You know, uh, and keep them at, at the full charge. And then it has a four port PoE switch built into it, so that you can have this in a remote location and have some. Uh, PoE cameras and a PoE access point or whatever. So it's pretty neat, you know, I had this running all winter down in the field, but once the leaves came out, it blocked my transmission of the signal, so I, <laughs> I brought it back up here. Um, yeah. But uh, that is a pretty neat, you know, in theory, you know, I could hook up a small miner on the 12 volt post on one of these batteries mm -hmm. and, and run it that way and for all the excess power. That'd be fun. Little, yeah. Little pilot, I mean, they're probably boring to you at this point. But like for someone who's just getting into solar, that could be like yeah. a fun pilot experiment. Right, exactly. You definitely learn a lot. And I might do that with, you know, maybe one of those 1080, I mean, uh, 1060 cards that I, I still got laying around, you know, something yeah. just, just, uh, just to say I, say I could do it, you know. Yeah, so. you're just showing off. Yeah. <laughs> That's and awesome. then uh, here is, you know, just to show you uh, the details of this um, shed building here, as far as the, um, the solar panels, uh, this is a mix of string inverter and micro inverter you oh. can see that the last three over here are look like they're wired differently mm -hmm. and that's because they are um they're using micro inverters um, so why'd you do that uh the reason i did that is is once again you know i use the same uh sunny boy uh, string inverter that's rated at 7.7 7, uh, uh kilowatts mm -hmm. that's the biggest one they make you know uh, so um so you just want to be honest capacity so i just wanted so i didn't want to go too way too much past the capacity so i just had some spare um, inverters like this and i did want to have a you know four bay pole barn here so i figured well I, so i just um you know did these last nine panels as uh, micro inverters and uh, ran that down so so i have them both running here you know this is my ac for the micro inverters and this is my dc string on the big conduit coming down here and that in turn then runs uh, up here and into the shop and over to where the power panels are, the sub panels. That's awesome. And while I was at it, I went ahead and did a, um, ran an ethernet cable to have a little security camera, you know, to keep an eye on the, on the miners. Yeah. Cause I know your top secret location now. <laughs> yeah. I've been here twice. I could almost just drive here by memory. Yeah. And then, um, and in here, so here's that second Sunny Boy 
uh, I'm out of this one inside, you know, that basically shows the, um, um, you know, that captures uh, DC power coming from those, uh, from the pole barn over there. And this one should be, yeah, you can see this one is already at 6,500 watts, so it's going to hit, it's going to max out here in the next, within the next hour or so and stay that way until uh, probably 3 or 4 this afternoon. So, w w so like time of day, you, you probably find like, just based off the current time, like maximum solar uh, yeah, output so, is so, like 12 to 3? Yeah, well, so being that it is daylight savings time now, you know, the sun is highest in the sky at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would say, yeah, so around 1 p.m., not all the panels are aligned exactly the same towards the sun, so, so they don't all peak at the exact same time. I'd say from about 11 in the, in the, in the summertime, I'd say from about 11 till about 3 in the afternoon is, is where I, I produce my most, uh, the most kilowatt hours. Okay. And are those panels easy to open or do you have to pop those bolts off? To get uh, yeah, these are, these are kind of a pain to open. It's, okay. it's pretty cool. It's very ro rocketly built. Um, and they get, they get a little, they get kind of warm to the touch, yeah. uh, but they do have a, a fan that turns on to keep them cool. You know, this one. Oh, so a built-in fan inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, once they get like up to about, I think about 7,000 watts, then it starts to, um, to yeah. cool it down, but it's still very efficient. You know, I think the efficiency is about 98% on these. And I think the microinverters are about 97%. Yeah. So all in all, you know, Still very efficient. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so. and the other thing we can do, you know, we can, we can take my truck and we can go down and show you the river down there. If you, yeah. can, you can film that, you know, rolling down the road there. <laughs> Come and see. If you want, go on the That'd Crazy cool. Danes River. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hydropower coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for part three, hydro. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you. Yeah. At all. Are you already no, thinking really about been, it? No, I've been thinking about it. Believe me, I'll, I'll show you. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Peter, Crazy Dane, thanks so much for having us over. You're welcome, Voss. It was fun. <laughs> this is Miss Voss, the uh, professional camera woman. <laughs> and do you have any final like thoughts or words or advice for anyone who are thinking about doing uh, you know, solar panels or especially like solar for mining? Just do it. Don't even think about yeah, it. Just do it, Nike. Yeah. Just do it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys on the next one.